one with, uh, with Dr. Russo. So um, I'm the, with the pleasure to introduce Dr. Russo, Andrea Russo. Dr. Russo is a refractive and cataract surgeon, uh, as well as the medical director of the Centro Oculistico Brecciano in Breccia, Italy. So before founding his own clinic, uh, he developed and patented the DI company, uh, technology to scan the retina, uh, exploiting smartphones, actually. Uh, Dr. Rousseau's research uh, has led to uh, over 50 peer-reviewed publications, uh, interna international presentations, and lectures. Dr. Rousseau, that's all yours. Thank you for the kind invitation. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. So I will try to share with you my experience with the Lucidis lens, uh, which I agree completely with Dr. Beauvais, it's a really easygoing lens, even if it's still dependent to illumination. The pupil dependency is not that important, and also the centration of the lens is not that mandatory. So it's very, very easygoing, I would say, for all kinds of patients and all kinds of surgeons doing cataract surgery. So let me start with, of, with uh, an overview about the technology we now have to amend uh, presbyopia. And what you see is the pattern coming from and the barometer for a diffractive lens. So you can see all those rings and that is what our patients complain of when we implant a traditional diffractive lens maybe bifocal or trifocal or multifocal, doesn't matter. So this is what they see through. So the quality itself is not that high. And this probably helps us to understand why they complain a lot with halos. And this is a Fresnel lens. Fresnel was an engineer in France in the 18th century which is the principle behind the diffractive lenses. So the diffraction of the light, which is a principle exploited in diffractive lens, is the same principle we still have in uh, cd rom So um, but the quality itself is not that high. And in my experience in my clinic, I do not implant any more diffractive lens. This was a choice I made last year in favor of EDOF technology. And I will try to explain you why later on. Essentially, it's because of the quality of vision. So this is the principle behind a diffractive lens. You have diffractive pattern, which is coupled with a focusing lens, focusing lens and you have a multifocal capability. So you have many foci of light, but of course you split the light into so many focuses and of course you drop the quality of the vision. Uh, so this is the diffractive pattern and this is the refractive, which is uh, the technology together with the pseudo non-diffractive beam, which is at the basis of the Lucidis lens. But Dr. Bouvet have already explained you in an excellent way this technology. So what is the correction for presbyopia? Ideally, the correction for presbyopia should have a clear vision for distance, clear vision for intermediate, clear vision at near, at the same time, maintaining an excellent optical quality with good safety, good contrast sensitivity and night vision preservation. Of course, you wanna still have binocularity. You wanna have high patient tolerance, a short adaptation time and a simultaneous correction of all refractive errors. So I would say that the Lucidis lens can comply with all these requirements. So just to recap, so far we can correct the presbyopia with monovision, with multifocality, or with EDOF. And all three mm, technologies, all three methods can be applied to the cornea with refractive surgery, as Dr. Bouvet said, or we can have this technology into the IOL. We have monofocal IOL, we have multifocal IOL, and now finally, we have the EDOF IOLs. Of course, it's not perfection, but is the closest thing we have to perfection so far, in my opinion. So 
the Lucidis technology allows us to have an excellent correction because they have lenses with power range between 5 and 30, and now they also have the capability of correction for astigmatism. And I will try to share with you my experience, my early experience with uh, these lenses, with my happy patients. So these are the early results for the first 138 eyes we implanted. Like Dr. Bouvet, I prefer to implant both eyes simultaneously the same day, just because they neuro adapt faster. They don't try to compare right eye with left eye or vice versa. So they have a full adaptation the day after and the day after they can read the newspaper, they can drive to the clinic for the visit and they, they are very happy. You can truly see the wow effect like after a LASIK the day after. So these are the early results. And as you can see, 86% of patients were really on spot with the uh, uh, uncorrected vision of 2020. And also the quality of vision is so high, they can still hit the 2016 vision. So I'm very happy with the quality of these lenses. And also the calculation formulas are really on spot because as you can see, the postoperative spherical equivalent refraction is very close to zero. But as Dr. Bouvet said before, the defocus curve is really flat. So these lenses are very much forgiving. Even if you do not hit plano, patients don't really, they don't mind because you have both eyes implanted and the focus curve is very, very flat. So it's very much forgiving. And in comparison to the scan I showed you before, this is the aberrometry from a Lucidis lens. And as you can see here on the left part of the screen, you don't have all those rings leading to all those halos, all those glares that patients complain of. So you have a nice clear view for the patient. And still, if you measure with the instrument here in this central part, you can see the refractive effect of the pseudo non-refractive beam and you have a plus three at in the center. But it's not really important to have this bump in the very center of the pupil. That doesn't matter. It, patients are happy even if it's not really centered. Like in this case, you can see the pupil and you can see the bump, which is not perfectly centered, but patients are super happy. So it's not that important to have in perfect position. And this is the measurement of the three central millimeters of the spherical aberrations. And you can see that the value of the spherical aberration is close to zero. So this is because this lens doesn't exploit the spherical duration, but it's a pseudo diffractive beam with a refractive technology. And the, after all, the quality is very high. In contrast, this is the quality of a diffractive lens. And you can clearly see a drop in the contrast sensitivity in this kind of lenses. So cataract and astigmatism we have to take into consideration that 20% of our patients undergoing cataract surgery have more than one and a half diopters of astigmatism. So what to do? Of course, we have so many techniques applicable for this uh, astigmatism correction. I sometimes do L or I, so relaxing incision with the femtosecond laser for a small amount of astigmatism, essentially for amount of astigmatism ranging from zero to one, where the IOL is not available. Of course, you can still do bioptics, you can do LASIK or PRK later on, but of course, the best solution, saving time and making the patient happiest is the toric IOL. And thanks, thanks to the company, we now have the Lucidit's toric available which is an excellent tool to correct all the astigmatism present in the cornea. So, of course, we have to do some extra steps if we want to implant a toric IUL. We need a proper formula for the calculation. 
we need to properly align and mark the position of the IOL. And eventually, just in case, I will show you later, you sometimes need to reposition the lens if you are not on spot. So what I prefer, rather than multi-formula, I like to have multi-equipment. So I rely on the Pentacam, I rely on the IOL master. I want to have multiple equipment showing me what is the real astigmatism in the cornea. And what I do is to measure the whole corneal astigmatism. So the anterior, the posterior, and so the total astigmatism present in the cornea, because that is the amount of astigmatism that you want to correct with your IOL. So I would like to have multiple equipment because sometimes my technician don't pay attention to the tear film or to other details. And if all the equipments are in agreement with the measurement, okay, we can go ahead and implant in the lens. If not, we just sit down and discuss the case and maybe we do some other examination to the patient. So it's important to correct all the amount of uh, astigmatism present into the eye. And uh, in our clinic, we have the Callisto system, which is uh, this kind of augmented reality for the implantation of the lenses. And when we started to adapt the technology, the realignment rate dropped close to zero. So you have to take into consideration that for all toric lenses, including the Leucidist lenses, you have a drop in the astigmatism effect, in the astigmatism correction. The drop is with this rate. So for 10 degrees of misalignment, you lose 30%. For 20 degrees, you lose 60, 66%. And for 30 degrees of misalignment, you lose everything. So you want to be really on spot, really on target. So try to mark your cornea or maybe use augmented reality like the Callisto system available from Zeiss just to have the best, to do the best for the patient for your surgery. And you will be very happy with the results of this kind of lens because it has a huge range of possible refractive error correction. And this is what I wanted to show you that sometimes you realize to be not on spot. Maybe there is a little bit amount of residual astigmatism after the implantation of the IOL. And so now there are barometers like the one from the CSO, CSO helping you determining which way to correct the axis of the IOL you have implanted. So let's say to go five degrees clockwise or 10 degrees in the opposite direction. And so maybe after 10 days, after one week, you can go back to the surgical room and realign the lens. It's important to wait, in my opinion, at least 10 to 10, one week to 10 days, because in the first day, look at this picture, you have the surgical induced astigmatism that in this case is very high. So you wanna get rid of this surgical induced astigmatism before trying to understand the, the final result of the patient. But at the same time, you want to do that early in order to avoid any phimosis or any contraction of the capsule. So I think the sweet spot is between seven and 10 days. So this is the final results we had with the toric lenses, the lucidus lenses. This is the first 64 eyes, like for the spheric lenses, 80 to 80% 80 of patients were really happy with 2020 vision. And also a smaller percentage could hit 2016 of vision. So once again, the quality of the vision, the contrast sensitivity is very high for happy patients. And also the precision of the correction of the astigmatism is very high. You can see that the vast majority of the patients has a residual astigmatism between 0.26 and 0.5, almost nothing. So this technology is really helping us hitting the result, delivering very high world-class uh, technology to our happy patient. 
and I thank you for your attention. And thanks, Dr. Russo, uh, for this uh, very nice presentation, very clear. Um, uh, and thanks for the point on the astigmatism and, and that you have to take care of this, this correction and, and the toric versions as well. That's, that was very interesting to, to, to hear. I'm now inviting uh, the, the different panelists to, to join and to, to discuss with uh, Dr. Russo. For those who have uh, uh, put some questions on, we are, we are keeping on so the tracks for that. So we, we are not going to lose your question, guys. So I'm, I'm going to make sure we're going to answer that. But before, maybe for the other panelists, um, uh, I'm invite them to discuss with Dr. Russo right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've used a small number of these lenses. Uh, I agree totally with Dr. Russo. Uh, that the results are outstandingly good. Uh, the first uh, thing that you notice is the flat deep water skull. If your cutoff is 6.9, we go from plus 1 to minus 2. And 6.9 parts, we go from 1.5 plus 2 minus 2.5. That's fantastic uh, depth of focus. And uh, they've looked at the um, contrast sensitivity by doing uh, on the eye trace, uh, the MTF curves, and they're very, very encouraging. When you look at uh, the residual uh, aberrations, the total aberrations come down. <clears throat> Spherical aberrations are almost zero, and overall the quality of vision is very good. So this uh, particular lens uh, really works very well uh, with uh, minimal uh, dysphotopsia and good depth of field uh, right across from distance to intermediate and near. Yes, this is true. So I would invite you to do an aberrometry to the patient after you have implanted the lenses, maybe the lucidies, maybe the diffractive ones, so you can better understand their point of view and the quality of vision they have. If you do so, you can somehow understand what they complain of. Mm -hmm. And believe me, if you do the comparison between high quality diffractive lenses and lucid lens, you can see that the MTF, the point spread fraction, and the quality overall is way higher. So this is why we decided in our practice to, to stop implanting diffractive lenses, but we now implant only EDOF lenses. So you sometimes can offer complete spectacle independence, sometimes not, of course, but this is the way to go, in my opinion, with either of lenses. Yeah, I agree completely with you, uh, Dr. Russo. I have even stopped implanting uh, diffractive type of lenses for a year now after uh, embarking on Lucidus. And uh, the MTF function, which we noted, was similar to a monofocal lens. So the contrast sensitivity, the nighttime vision is really good. So this lens has definitely given us more than what was expected of this lens. Definitely. Yeah. Very good. Thanks. Any, any other discussions or anything we can start with Dr. Russo or, or, or Dr. Bobe or uh, 